All right, it's Jeff here, uh, and it's Friday. Uh, so today we will be talking more about my trades in the market. Um, but let's kick it off with some news before we go over to the trades. Uh, let's see. Okay, so yesterday, uh, you probably already realized that um, the stocks market was actually hurt pretty badly, uh, especially for Nasdaq. Uh, we are down about two percent or so right now. It's um, we are about five minutes into the uh, market open. Uh, and yeah, basically the SPY is trying to get back up um, in the pre-market. They're up about 0.1%, uh, about 0.2% or so. Uh, but yeah, over here you can see, you know, stocks fall after jobless claims, inflation data. Um, so the thing is that the catalyst uh, that actually brought the stocks market down yesterday was mostly because of the jobless data. And what Brainard actually said, uh, let's see over here. So the new federal uh, vice chairperson after Richard Clarida uh, is leaving will be uh, uh, Brainard. Uh, so for uh, Lyle Brainard, um, she's going to be the new chairperson, uh, the new vice chairperson. She was actually supposed to uh, be the new chairperson if Jerome Powell didn't get in. By the way, she pledged to uh, defeat inflation. She wants to get inflation down to the 2% uh, level again. Uh, that is what she is saying to be their top priority as the Federal Reserve. And the issue is, if you want to bring inflation down to the 2% level again, what will actually happen is that you will effectively have to increase your rate hikes about seven times this year six or seven times this year for you to even possibly uh, reach a 2%, uh, to even see a 2% inflation year over year. And also that's provided that we solve our supply chain issues. Uh, we also solve the uh, max employment issues. I think the max employment issues might be an easier uh, problem to solve. But for the supply chain issues, I think this is going to be a bigger problem. Uh, especially yesterday, I did read an article about um, the ports in China uh, having... Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so shipping congestion is growing at world's biggest port, uh, at the Ningbo port. Uh, because apparently they are actually giving a half day for people to actually uh, go through with their vaccination uh, status and such. Uh, in Shang Shanghai. And because of that, um, the biggest port is having more congestion going on. And because of that, that's going to increase uh, more uh, supply chain issues. Uh, hence, you know, bring forth more inflation fear into the market as well. Uh, so yeah, basically these are the fears that we have in the market. Um, yeah, you know, the, the headlines that you're going to be seeing uh, for the next next uh week or so is gonna be about the vaccines are gonna be about the supply chains is gonna be about the inflation and it's gonna be about biden uh and the voting bill which i am going to be doing uh a research on i actually have a post-it here for me to do research uh for the things that i want to check on by the way uh, let's talk about my trades instead uh, because I think that's what people are actually more interested in. Anyway, all right. So let's talk about this entire week. So this entire week is from the 7th. Okay. So what I actually bought. Okay. I bought uh, puts in Unity, which worked out very well. I bought puts in Roblox, which made me a lot of money yesterday. Uh, I Okay. But the thing is that I'm a little bit... Um, pissed off at myself at the same time because I know that the market was going to drop but I didn't know to what extent uh, so I basically cashed out my Roblox puts position when I was profitable in about the $4,000 region and afterwards it kept on dropping and uh, I could have earned about uh, $16,000 but I cashed out at $4,000 so uh, I'm a little bit pissed off at that. Uh, of course, I do say that, you know, uh, I should not get emotional with trades. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I'm still kicking myself over it simply because I knew that the market is not going to turn out well, especially after the jobless um, claims. But uh, I did not want to follow through with it because I'm very, very worried. I actually got uh, destroyed by uh, trading options uh, on more volatile assets before. And because of that, 
uh, I'm just a little bit more worried and because because of the nature of having um, screwed over by um, an options on the other side. I just thought, yeah, you know, cashing in the four thousand dollars would be all right, uh, but I did not expect Roblox to continuously drop. Uh, Roblox had the worst, had one of the worst drops yesterday, uh, down to about like nine percent, uh, in intraday, and yeah, you know, I could have easily made an additional sixteen thousand dollars, and that was a little bit painful to see. Uh, but you know, uh, nevertheless, I still made I still made money, so I cannot really complain over there. All right, afterwards, I bought I bought puts in Ford, uh, Ford Motors, uh, which wasn't really doing very well yesterday because uh, Ford went up by two percent in trade yesterday. Uh, but right now in pre market, it's starting to come down a little bit, uh, down about 06 percent or so. So that's gonna be good for my Ford puts. Um, I sold um, a few Metaports put uh, yesterday. Uh, basically, because I want to own Metaport, uh, which is a 3D scanning uh, software. Uh, it is a small cap company, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about a $2 billion company. Uh, but yeah, I think Metaport is a very good company because of that. And it also works into the Metaverse play as well. So Metaport, quite good. Uh, I still push on it. Um, although it is, it might be dropping even more. Let's see. Oh, never mind. It's up five percent. Yep, I'm gonna make money on that. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm okay with uh, selling a put because basically, if it does expire, uh, in the money, then I'm just gonna be the proud owner of six hundred shares in Metaport. If not, then I will just sell the Metaport. Uh, I'll buy back the Metaport puts and basically just uh earn the premium from that. Okay, I bought more Palantir calls, which. Yeah, not really doing super duper well. Um, I bought a Snapchat. I bought shares in Snapchat uh, yesterday at about $38. Uh, I'm actually quite happy with that because I managed to uh, dollar cost average downwards for my Snapchat. Uh, and because for Snapchat, they also just got a new rating up uh, downgrade uh, by a company. Let me check who, who downgraded my Snapchat. Uh, Snapchat... Weibo is not working as well. Okay. Um, Snapchat. That's weird. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it was downgraded by Cowens. Um, Cowens uh, downgraded uh, Snapchat from a um, over uh, from an overperforming uh, down to a neutral uh, rating. So because of that. Snapchat went down and I also bought in a little bit more Snapchat when we saw the entire spike curve going all the way down. Uh, it just made more sense for me to buy more Snapchat, just do dollar cost average into it. Uh, SoFi, I bought more SoFi uh, because for SoFi right now, the uh, floor pricing for SoFi is at $12.82. Um, and as the nature of how SoFi is, uh, SoFi is a spec, which is a special, uh, special purpose acquisition company. So they started with $10 and personally, I would like to think that SoFi is still on a $10 standing. And because of that, uh, when it actually went down to about $13 close, uh, I actually bought more SoFi uh, just for me to actually get more uh, shares ex exposure to SoFi uh, because I did sell um, all my SoFi shares at $24 when it actually went up before we actually had this whole crash. I sold all my SoFi uh, shares. I only kept my calls, uh, but my calls were like leaps, uh, which is like expiring in 2023. So I wasn't very worried. Uh, but yeah, because of that, uh, now I'm back into SoFi at a very, very low cost and I'm very, very happy with that. So yeah. Uh, okay. I bought puts on Uber. Uh, let's see how Uber is doing. Uh, let's see. Uber, Uber. Okay, Uber is... Yeah, U Uber wasn't doing uh, fantastically well yesterday. Uh, he actually went up by a percent and then afterwards uh, ended uh, by a 0.4% downwards. Um, but yeah, I think this puts on Uber basically is just me betting against the fact that um, we are going to enter a very uh, rich uh, recovering economy. I think it's going to be more into the tech company uh, in the near future as well. And by near future, I mean by like a year or so. Because I think that um, 2022 shouldn't be the year that we actually uh, completely destroy COVID. I don't think COVID is going to be disappearing anytime soon. 
But yeah, sad but truth. All right. I then bought calls in Apple because after yesterday seeing the spy go down, um, I bought Apple calls so, uh, around $172 or so. Uh, when Apple was about $172 or so, I bought more calls on Apple. So hopefully, uh, Apple actually go up. My calls does strike uh, $175. So uh, this is out of the money. Apple calls basically like a YOLO play. Uh, I do not recommend this, but uh, I'm simply just doing this because I think that uh, when the SPY drops so much, I would expect there's some form of recovery that comes in the week, uh, the week after. All right, and then finally would be a firm. I bought more calls in a firm because I think uh, I talk about a firm a lot, and I expect a firm to have quite a good, um, quite a good quarter, uh, because uh, the next quarter when a firm um, reports, it should be in the late January. I'm guessing twenty fifth or twenty sixth. Uh, that is also when they actually report the um, holiday season's um, sales. And because Affirm is also uh, closely tied to Amazon, uh, and due to the fact that uh, Affirm is actually a payment partner with Amazon, I think that uh, when Amazon have a good year, basically Affirm is going to have a good year as well. Uh, and I think uh, Amazon is going to have a good holiday quarter, which is why this is basically me just hedge, uh, just betting on the fact that Amazon got a good quarter during the holiday seasons and because of that, people are going to be using Affirm. And if Affirm has a high amount of volume of transactions, then they are basically going to be doing very well. Uh, but yeah, these are just uh, the positions that I made this week. Uh, and yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, let's see if we have any other news for us to actually look at before I actually end this new segment. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, Bloomberg don't really have anything much, though. Uh, okay, yeah. A nurse strike across the US to uh, protest COVID uh, working conditions. I think this is actually quite sad uh, because I feel that nurses should really be paid more. I don't get why nurses are still be being underpaid, especially when the demand is so frigging high. I still don't get people who think that, you know, nurses should be underpaid, especially during this period of time. Uh, but, like, yeah, you know. We don't have food service people. We don't have supply chain people to deliver our most critical supply. We don't have people to repair our equipment, which I think this actually comes back to the whole uh, great resignation uh, nation as well, uh, which I actually talk about in the video uh, about like how why people want to quit and such. And at the same time, I feel that to build on that fact as well, it's also uh, because a lot of people basically have a better financial standing right now uh, as compared to uh, like in the past where we are actually more comfortable with quitting our jobs because we already have our emergency funds for the next five, six months. And because of that, we can basically quit our job quite comfortably. Uh, but I think in about a few more months or so, the great resignation will probably have to come to an end because uh, people basically will be unable to pay for their bills. They are unable to pay for their loans and such. And then they'll inevitably have to go back to their jobs. They have to go back to the employer. And then it becomes the employer's um, play where they can just be like, you know what, you're not getting the pay raise that I actually offered before and such. So yeah, I think it's going to be quite uh, annoying for us to actually maneuver around this entire great res resignation um, in the next few months or so. Uh, but yeah, sad for this, the whole staffing situation. Uh, let's see if Barons have anything for us. Uh, yeah, Governor, CarMax, car prices. Yeah, car prices. Um, I I did see that the uh used cars and trucks um index. I'm not sure if I can get it up. Uh, used cars and trucks index USA. Uh, okay, we can use the Fred uh, economic data. Yeah, so you see over here, um, this is the consumer price index for the used cars and trucks in US, and you can see that in the nineteen uh, in the in the nineteen hundreds basically was very high, but look over here, this this is the crazy part, you know, it's always about the one four nine ish, and suddenly we spiked all the way up to the two two uh, two tens. So, uh, this spike is the situation, uh, from basically the supply chain shortages that is happening right now. And that's the concerning part. Uh, every single spike is steeper than the, the previous one, which is why it's 
quite crazy for us to actually see this. Uh, but yeah, I like Fred Economic Data. Uh, very interesting for us to see. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's see if we got anything on Wall Street Journal. Um, oh, okay. Uh, the Gen 6 panel uh, getting subpoenaed. So the things that what happened during the Gen 6 was the capital attack. Uh, so I think all the bigger uh, social media company basically uh, got subpoenaed, which is yeah, your Alphabet, your Meta Platform, Reddit, Twitter. Uh, basically all of them got um, subpoenaed for the entire riot attack that happened and why they didn't uh, stop the spread of misinformation and such. Uh, I, I did casually read this yesterday. But same thing, I do have a post-it note here that make that requires me to oh okay actually i don't let me just uh research research on gen 6 capital attack okay i'm gonna research about this a little bit more i'm just gonna yeah uh i'm not sure if this will become a video or not but yeah i'm just gonna research on this a little bit uh later on uh, I might go for a workout after this. But yeah, I'm going to be researching on this later on. Uh, but yeah, basically, that's all there is to this boring day of news. Uh, and also, do take note that on Monday, we'll have Martha Luther King Day, uh, which is not a trading day for the US on Monday, which is why we will be having a three-day weekend. Uh, so I will not be posting um, a daily news on Monday. Uh, but tomorrow, I'll be uh, uploading a new video, um, a normal video, not a daily news video on my channel. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys Tuesday.